Well, let's work with our angles and our arcs of our circles. Okay, we just got to be careful because there's a lot of properties and a lot of theorems that we're going to get thrown at you uh, during this circle unit. So there's going to be a lot of little things to remember. And a lot of them make sense, um, but some of them you're just going to have to memorize. So this is one of the sections where it, it seems to make sense, I'd like to think. So first of all, a central angle is an angle with a vertex in the center of the circle. So if I look at this angle A, B, C, it's got a vertex that has the center right there. And the nice part is, if this is x degrees, whatever degree measure that is, we're going to start talking about that. There's an arc out here as well, and this arc is going to have the exact same angle measure. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, so first of all, just the central angle, angle A, B, C, would be right there, uh, and that's how we would name that. As it has to have a vert vertex at the center. Well, if I added up all the vertices of a circle, or all the angles of a circle with, with the uh, vertex at the center, so if I added one, two, and three, they got to add up to 360 degrees. Because I think about a circle, right, it goes all the way around 360 degrees. So that same thing works for the angle measures. If I added up all the angles, angle one, and then angle two, and then angle three, it makes the circle. So they all add up to 360 degrees. So we'll need to know that information. Well, I just talked about arcs. Okay, we have uh, three types of arcs. And the arcs are the angles of like the arc of the circle, basically. So our first one is a minor arc. So a minor arc is the shortest arc connecting two endpoints of a circle. And our minor arcs are less than 180 degrees. So for example, right here, this arc from A to B, which if I wanted to name it, I'd go A, B, and I make kind of an arc. That's how I know that. I'd call that arc A, B. Well, its angle measure is the exact same as the central angle. So if the central angle is X degrees, the arc angle would be X degrees. So let's just make up something. Let's say X is... 57. So basically, if measure of angle ACB is 57 degrees, then the measure of arc AB is also 57 degrees. Yeah. So just know that the central angle and the arc angle are the same. But remember, that's only if it's a central angle. If it, it makes an um, angle with the center. Well, if a minor arc is less than 180, more than 180 has to be a major arc. So basically between 180 and 360, because obviously 360 would be our whole circle. Okay? And the, the trick about this one, it's named with three vertices. Named with three vertices. So for example, the major arc right here would be A, D, B, because that's greater than 180. So I would call that A, D, B. B and put my little arc symbol over top. Well, and if this minor arc of AB is X degrees, to find the measure of ADB, if I wanted to find that actual angle measure, I would just take 360 and subtract that minor arc of measure of AB. The measure of AB. And if it goes perfectly uh, across the center of the circle, if it has a diameter, then it's called a semicircle. So, for example, here, an arc with endpoints that lie on the diameter, well, A, B. So, measure of arc A, B is 180 degrees because it's half the circle, a semicircle. It's a half the circle. So, if it's a diameter, it makes a semicircle. And this one's important. We're going to look at this guy a lot as we go through our work. You always want to find semicircles. So it says find the value of x. Well, if I look at my circle, I'm not really given any information about specific angle measures. I don't know what this measure is or what this measure is. I don't know what any arc angle measures are. It didn't give me anything specific. So when I don't know where to start, the one thing I always look for when I'm concerned with circles is if I can find a diameter. Because I know that a diameter would be a semicircle, which is 180. And if I look here, I see one VR or RV foam right there. So I know that 
these three angles right here have to add up to 180. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up 8x minus 4 plus 13x minus 3 plus 5x. Oh, I guess I'll plus that. Be plus 5. 5x plus 5 equals 180. All three have to add up to 180. And we combine like terms. So 8x plus 13x plus 5x is 26x, negative 4, negative 3, and a 5. So negative 7 plus 5, which is negative 2, equals 180. Let's add that 2 over. 26x equals 182. And if we divide by 26, x would be 7. And I should check to see if I need to plug it in anything. Well, it asks for the value of x, so I am done. x equals 7. Sometimes it might say, find the measure of arc QV. Well, then I'd have to plug 7 in for x right here to find the measure of QV. Well, if I really want to do that, I would just take 20 times 7, and I'd say it's 140 degrees. Okay, So you can use that information if you needed to. A few more things. Congruent arcs, well, arcs in the same or congruent circles that have the same measure. So for example, if I have two central angles, like one and two here, if I said that they were congruent, that means their arcs that they make would also be congruent. So FG would be congruent to HJ. See how I said some of this stuff should make sense? That makes sense, right? As long as the uh, it's a central angle, right? The angle's at the center. Okay, and vice versa. If the arc FG is congruent to HJ, then the angles would be congruent that they make the central angles. Adjacent arcs, well, if they share a point, so for example, x, y would be adjacent to y, z, the two arcs. Okay, nothing much to that. Adjacent, right, we, that means right next to, pretty familiar with that. All right, let's answer a couple more things here. It says find the measure of KL, the angle, this is, remember, this is arc angle. So I'm finding the angle of this, or I could find the angle of that because they're the same thing. Now, well, how would I do this? Well, let's think about this. Comfort, here's that piece of the pie. It's really 21% of the circle, right? So it's really 21% of the circle. Well, 21% of the circle, and I'm trying to find the arc angle, the arc degrees. So can I just find 21% of, well, what is the circle in degrees? 360. And how do I find the percents of numbers? Well, this goes back to a couple years ago. Remember, you change to a decimal, so 0.21, and multiply by 360. So 0.21 times 360 gives us 75.6 degrees. Because it's just 21% of the circle. And that third circle is 360, so that's all there is to it. Not too bad. And I can do the same thing for arc angle NJL. So N, remember, just follow the arc. N to J to L. So I'm looking at all three of those. So basically 26%, 30%, and 21% added together. What if I add all those together? 26% plus 37% plus 21%. What percent of the circle is that? That is a, whoa, what is my math? 84% of the circle? I really could have just taken 16% minus from 100. Added. Okay, so anyway, 84% of 360, which is really 0.84 times 360, and that would give us 302.4 degrees. And it should make sense. It's almost the whole circle, so it should be around 300 degrees. And if you're getting answers that are bigger than 360, um, obviously you know you did something wrong. Okay, so make sure your answer makes sense. And lastly, arc length. Okay, this is different now. This is the actual length of the arc. And we use L for uh, arc length. And it puts it in the words. It says the ratio of the length of the arc to the circumference of the circles. Blah, blah, blah. All right, that's kind of confusing. Let's really just think about this for a second. Well, this arc length is a part of the whole circle, which we call the circumference, right? The whole distance. So circumference is the entire difference. Number C for circumference. So if I think about that, that arc length L is just a little part of the entire circumference C. And it should have the exact same ratio of the angles. So let's think about this. The 
angle that it makes, this guy's L, the angle that it makes, angle x, x degrees here, right? that's the arc angle now of x degrees. That little part, compared to the entire angle, the entire arc angle of the circle of 360, should be equal. They should have the same ratio, right? Because we're, we're talking about the same arc. So basically the length over the circumference, right, the part of the whole, over the whole part of the circle, and the angle compared to the whole angle of the circle should be equal to each other if we're considering the same arc, right? We're dealing with this arc here. So this length over the circumference and the angle measure of that arc over the whole angle of the circle should be equal to each other, right? Because if I set that up, then I can, it's a proportion. I can use cross products and go from there. So let's use this now. It should make sense, right? Because it's the same percent of the circle, the same ratio of the circle. It says find the length of DA. So just be careful. This says find the length. So length means the arc length. It's not talking. If it wants the angle measure, it would say measure of DA. It's a sloppy D there. So that would talk about angle measure. This says length. So just be careful with that. So I'm looking for the like the actual length of this. <coughs> well, let's just call this L for now. So I know the piece of that over the circumference. Well, how do I find the circumference? Pi times diameter, right? So I'm going to replace that with pi d. Pi d. Well, do I know the diameter? Yeah, it's right here. 12 centimeters. So I'm going to replace a d with 12. So 12 times pi. Pi d. Or pi times 12. However you want to write that. Yeah? And that equals the, the angle ratio. So this is kind of the length side. And this will be the angle side. Well, the angle... Do I, I, I got to know what this angle measures, don't I? Well, if I look... Here's a semicircle. Remember, I always look for that. So I could subtract 28 from 180. Well, in this case, we get 152 degrees, 152. So 152, that arc angle over the entire circle of 360. And there we go. Now we got a proportion set up because we can take the cross product. So I can take 360 times L. 360L equals, well, 12 pi times 152, well 12 times 152 gives me 1824. I'm just going to leave pi for now. It says round to the nearest hundredth, so I can round my decimal, it doesn't ask for an exact answer. And to solve for L, we divide by 360. So the arc length is going to equal 1824 times pi divided by 360, which we get 15.917. And that 7 tells me to round the 1 up, so 15.92, and I'm in centimeters, right? Because I got a centimeter right there. So the arc length is 15.92 centimeters. So there we go. So it should kind of make sense. Those ratios should be equal. The length ratio equals the angle ratio. So don't, you don't really need to memorize the formula. Just think about what it means. And there we go.